This is Jack Sheffield, Jack the Exam Guy, talking Florida Building Code Fuel Gas. Now, this presentation is coming out of the 2020 Fuel Gas Code, but if you have a 2017, 2023, whatever version you have, this will work. Your page number might be one or two pages different, but um, you should be able to navigate that without a problem. Okay, when do you refer to this manual? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's if, if the question is about fuel gas, natural gas, propane, anything along those lines, pipe sizing for fuel gas, venting as well. Remember, these fuel appliances have to be vented. Many of them do, so you might have to do some venting or what have you. Okay, now it is a code book. Now, <clears throat> you've probably heard this before, but remember, code questions are rules, codes are laws, so the the question will present itself in such a way that it has to be a certain way. It shall be. It must be. Maybe it's a minimum or a maximum. Okay, remember, this is fuel gas, not medical gas. All right, so when you're talking pipe sizing, so make sure that you can differentiate in the question whether or not they're asking you about medical gas or fuel gas. Okay, um, it has got a good index. All right. And there is a, uh, a decent table of contents, and you're going to have tabs. You know, obviously, there's a few places I want to make sure that you put tabs, and I'll tell you about those in just a minute. Okay, most of these code books do have good indexes. Now, speaking of the table of contents, I kind of want to mention something. Okay, so chapter one is administration, permits, codes, and what have you. Now, most of the time, many of the times, um, People, like whatever uh, store you get these from, or maybe you got them from somebody else or something like that, they'll put chapter one in the back. So you don't really need chapter one for this exam. You know, you're really not going to be talking about permits. We're, uh, that's kind of in the, you know, another, another, uh, another exam. So, but what happens is they put this chapter one in the back and then you, you can't find the index because you're looking in the back for the index and all you see is chapter one. So make sure that you can find that index. All right. The indexes in all these code books and most of the other manuals are very important. So make sure that you can find the index in this thing. If somebody's put the chapter one in the back, chapter two is always definitions in all the code books, all of the building code books or, you know, Florida building code. Uh, chapter two is the definitions. Chapter three, we have some general regulations, you know, and there's stuff like structural safety in section 302. They almost always ask a question about structural safety. Okay, you're going to be drilling a hole in a stud. What are the rules with regard to how big that hole can be? How big of a notch can you cut in the end of a joist? Those types of things, structural safety. Chapter four, very important, gas pipe installation. Okay, there's a table we're going to look at in a minute, table 402.4. That's what I want you to have tabbed for one thing. All right, it tells us based on the pipe size, the pipe type, the pipe, you know, what, uh, <clears throat> what, uh, how far we're going and what the uh, pressure drop can be and so forth. Uh, what uh, size pipe we have to use. We'll talk about that in detail in just a minute. Same thing with the chimneys and vents in chapter five. There's going to be some tables and in chapter four and five, I'm going to help you navigate these tables. It's very important. Okay, chapter six is about specific appliances, furnaces, saunas, air conditioners, etc. Air conditioners, fuel gas, air conditioners, that's interesting. And then you have Chapter seven, gaseous hydro, hydrogen systems. You hear get, they talk, talk about hydrogen. Yeah, you're going to think fuel gas. Okay. And chapter eight, referenced standards. Okay. This is, you know, sometimes they'll just ask you about a standard and you just have to realize that all these code books have a uh, chapter about reference to standards and you can go find them there. And then you have your appendices, and I think it's worth talking about these appendixes or appendices is the actual correct word. Okay, so you have sizing and capacities of, of gas piping. Now, we talked about just a second ago about uh, table 402, 402.4, and we're going to go and look at that again. Um, but this is another table in the appendix, and this table actually shows what they call equivalent lengths of pipe fittings and valves. So here's the scenario. If you have a 90L or a 45L or you have a valve in a line 
it is going to act like an equivalent length of pipe with regard to restrictions and that type of thing. So it's called equivalent lengths of pipe fittings and valves. It's, it's a fairly typical thing in plumbing, so you kind of need to understand that. For example, if you look on the table, a 3 quarter inch 90L is equivalent to 2.06 feet of pipe. So when they ask you a question about pipe sizing and you have to go to that table I just talked about, table 402, then um, you may actually have to refer to this table as well if they throw a valve or a, a fitting in there. Okay. Uh, Appendix B is all types of diagrams about how they vent uh, appliances, especially if you're going to put more than one appliance on one, on one venting system and how that's supposed to happen. Lots of diagrams. So just in case you get something, you know, like a diagram in, uh, in, your, in, a, in a question. Appendix C, exit terminals of mechanical draft and direct venting system. You might want to take a look at this. This is just a picture of a building and they have, uh, they have uh, venting and then they have intake openings and they have some suggestions about how far apart they need to be and what have you. Could, uh, it could come up on the exam. Appendix D, um, recommended procedure for safety. Now you know with gas appliances you've got carbon monoxide, CO. Okay, so there's a table in here that talks about your CO thresholds. So you just might have to, uh, you might have to access that. So I just want to make you aware of these. Sometimes, you know, what's going on is they're constantly trying to uh, make new test uh, questions, new exam questions. And so they're having to dig deeper and deeper for different, more obscure stuff. And sometimes they go into these appendices and uh, find stuff. So don't ignore the appendices in any of these, um, especially the, the fuel gas and the plumbing code book. All right, so there's some important tables. Once again, the first one we're going to talk about is table 402.4. Just mentioned it a couple of times. Now there's actually 37 different pages. There's actually 37 different tables. All right because of the fact that there's so many different scenarios. There's all these different types of pipes, all these different inlet pressures, all these different pressure drops, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna take a look at that. But these tables are, this table 402.4 is about pipe sizing. So they're gonna, the question is gonna say, you know, they're gonna give you this, all these scenarios. Okay, they're gonna tell you this. They're gonna tell you, let's go on. So they're gonna tell you the type of the pipe, which could be metallic, um, uh, polyethylene, semi-rigid copper, okay, corrugated stainless steel tubing. It could be any of those. And then they're going to tell you the type of fuel. Okay, it could be natural, it could be propane. They're not going to give you hydrogen. Um, there's going to be an inlet pressure. There's going to be a pressure drop. And then there's going to be a specific gravity. They generally won't talk about specific gravity, but just in case, we're going to mention it here. And now all these things are at the top of the table. So they're going to throw all this information at you on this on this question. They're going to throw all these things, and you're going to go, oh my gosh, how in the world am I going to find that? This is impossible. But this is actually a pretty easy question, because all you got to do is find the table and, and work it out. I'm going to show you here. All right, so um, then you're given a length of pipe. They're going to tell you how long the pipe is, and you need to find out how big, what the diameter is, okay? Now, some of these tables are listed in BTUs, okay? You're going to get so many BTUs out of this pipe. You're going to need to, or in some of them in cubic feet. I'll show, you, I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Here we go. So here's an example. Here's a part of a table. This is the first one, 402.4 with the one in parentheses, okay? There's going to be one through 37 in parentheses, okay? So this one is about metallic pipe. We're talking about natural gas. We're talking about an inlet pressure of less than two PSI. We're talking about a pressure drop allowable of 0.3 inches of water column and a specific gravity of 0.60. So they're gonna tell you all this in the question and then they're gonna ask you what pipe, uh, they're gonna tell you a length over here. They're gonna say, okay, it's X number of, uh, of feet long. You have to have, this is in cubic feet Capacity in cubic feet, this one not be to use. They're going to tell you how many cubic feet per hour you need to get out of this uh, particular system. 
and you're and they'll tell you in the end and you go up here and you'll it'll tell you what size pipe it is so type of pipe type of fuel inlet pressure pressure drop specific gravity and then on the length and remember you may have to adjust that length for that equivalent length table in the appendix that we talked about okay like i said some of them are in cubic feet some of them are in btus and they talk about the pipe diameter at the top so um so let's say i want you to i want you to look at it. let's say that they told us it was scheduled 40 metallic natural gas less than 2 psi uh, the pressure drop, allowable pressure drop is 0.3 inches water column, specific gravity was 0 0.60, and the length was 50 feet. Now, this particular set, on this particular setup, these appliances that you're going to put on the end of these, uh, on the end of this pipe, are going to need 4,000 cubic feet per hour. So I want you to look at this table. Hit the pause button. Look at this table and tell me what pipe diameter you're going to need. Okay, we're back. Four inch. How do we know that? Well, first of all, all of this, all the pipe, the, you know, the gas and, and the, the inlet pressure, pressure drop, specific gravity, all of them matched up right here. We knew we were in the right table. That's the first thing you got to do is find the right table. If you don't find the right table, <clears throat> you could easily get the wrong answer. Okay, and we said it was 50 feet. All right, we didn't have any elbows or valves to make an adjustment on. We're taking it easy on you here a little bit. And we need 4,000 cubic feet, so we follow along here till we hit 4,000. 3590 is not going to do it. 7330 will do it. So it is a four inch pipe that we're going to need under this circumstance. It's really not that bad. Okay, so I've got a simple question, a sample question for you. Um, this is a semi-rigid copper tubing type K. We're going to be using undiluted propane, which is just propane. Okay, the undiluted part, don't worry about that. Okay, inlet pressure is 10 PSI. The pressure drop is 1 PSI. The specific gravity is 0.1 PSI. We've got 100 feet of, of, uh, of length of pipe. Okay, and we're going to need a million BTUs per hour. Hmm, okay, it's getting kind of intense here. What pipe diameter are we going to need? So what I want you to do is I want you to find the answer to this question, go find the right table, find the, you know, look at all this stuff, find the right uh, number out of the table, and, and then um, hit the pause button, and in a minute we'll come back and see if you got the right answer. Okay, so here we go. The type of pipe. We had to go to the right table. What table did we go to? We had to go to table 29, 402.429. Why? Because we needed semi-rigid, and type K is right here. Okay, semi-rigid copper. That was a little more complicated than what we did before, but you should have been able to do that. You're a plumber for crying out loud. You go out there and work hard all the time. You should be able to figure this stuff out. The type of fuel, propane. In the pressure, 10. Pressure drop is 1, specific gravity 1.5. Okay, this table matches up with all this stuff. We're in the right table. Okay, so we go and we look at our capacity. Now, this says these numbers, this isn't BT, BTUs. I need a million? Hold on a second, but look at what this says. This says capacity in thousands of BTUs per hour. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to take the three zeros off so this is a thousand so what we're looking for here is we're looking for the number one thousand so that's because if we find a thousand it's in thousand so a thousand thousand is a million so hopefully that didn't confuse you too much so anyway so the number we're looking for is a thousand all right and um the length was 100 feet so we go down to 100 feet we're going to come over till we find a thousand. Boom. There you go. Thousand eighty is going to handle. We go up here. The pipe size is five eighths. Yep. Pretty easy stuff. Not that big of a deal. I mean, you, you, well, once again, you see this question, it looks really intimidating. But when, <clears throat> whenever you see a question where they got all this data in a question, then you realize, hold on a second, that probably comes off of a table. And then you just say, then it's just a matter of finding the table. It's pretty simple. 
Okay, now here's the second set of tables that I want you to be able to find. Now this is in chapter five, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 504.2 and through uh, one through six. You have different types of gas vents. You've got one table that has a double B connected directly to the vent, another double B with a single wall metal connector. Uh, the third one's a masonry chimney type B double wall connector, another masonry with a single metal connector, uh, another single wall metal pipe asbestos uh, type B asbestos cement connected directly to, to pipe or vent, and then exterior masonry chimney. So here's the thing. You're going to get a question where they're going to give you a bunch of specific information about the vent and they're going to tell you how, you know, how far laterally it goes and how far vertically the vent, the vent goes. And you're going to have to come up with how the size of it. So I'm going to give you the type and the, uh, they're going to give you a lot of specifics. We'll talk about those right now. So here we go. So we've got, uh, a single appliance and all of these are single appliances. Okay, they don't do a double on this. You got to go to the appendix where they start talking about doubles. Okay, Is, they're all going to be category one. Here's what could change. They're connected directly to the vent or not. Okay, so watch for that. So do make sure that this is the same as what they ask in the question. Okay, and then you look over to the left and you've got the height and you've got the length. This is going in, in vertical. This is going lateral. So if they said eight and eight, if you had, if you're going up eight feet and horizontally eight feet, then you would, this is the line you would use. And then these are the numbers for the actual, what is it? We're talking thousands of BTUs again per hour. Okay. So Let's look up here again. Now this gets a little more complicated because you could have a fan and you have a minimum fan and a maximum fan. All right. And then you have a natural draft. Okay. So they're going to, they're going to tell you either maximum fan, minimum fan, natural fan, natural draft. And, and they're going to have, they're going to tell you the height of the uh, vent. They're going to tell you the lateral distance of the vent. They're going to tell you what, type of fan or whether it's natural vent, the minimum, maximum, or natural, and then you're going to have to, you're going to have to determine the diameter of the vent. Okay. It's just about like the pipe sizing. It's just, we're doing venting now and we're finding the right table. Okay. So let's do one. Let's do a sample question. Let's say you had a double wall gas vent single appliance, your vent connection was directly to the vent, your height on your um, vent was six feet, your lateral distance on the vent was two feet, your appliance that you're installing is rated at 150,000 BTUs, you're going to be running your fan at your maximum, and then so what is your vent diameter? So what I want you to do is I want you to go find the right table, and then I want you to um, find the answer. Hit that pause button, see if you can find the right answer. And then when you find it, come on back and let's see if you got it right. Okay, let's see how you did. So we're going to use basically that same table. Okay, and this will probably be the table that you have to use. But there's six of them, so make sure that the, everything at the top relates. It's a single appliance. It's a double B wall gas vent. Okay, is a vent connect. The vent connection is directly to the vent. Okay, now we have to go six, six feet high, two feet lateral. Okay, it's 150,000. So we're looking for 150 and it's going to be a maximum fan. So we go over here till we find 150 and the maximum fan and boom. There it is, right there. Okay, 157 with the fan at maximum, so that means it's a five inch. Yes, a five inch vent, five inch in diameter. It's really pretty simple, 
It's a question, once again, that looks complicated, but it's not that bad. Okay, now I'm getting a lot of feedback lately from people that are taking these exams. And they're saying, man, there's a lot of roof questions for some reason. I'm thinking roof questions and plumbing, really? Well, remember, you got this fuel gas, you got these vents, you got these stacks coming out the roof and what have you. So be prepared. Now, this particular table is 503.6.5. You might want to back up in your in your code book a little bit and take a look at it. And it has the uh, it's got the um, slope of the roof. OK, based on your slope, there's a height that they want this lowest discharge opening. OK, so they're measuring from here to here. What is this thing here? I think this is just a collar to help support the chimney. That's all I can think of. Because we're actually we're actually concerned with this distance from here to the lowest discharge opening. And that's what they're talking about in this table right here. So your slope is going to determine how far this minimum distance is right here. Okay, not a big deal. Just be aware that's in that's there. This is such a simple question to get right. Remember, fuel gas, you've got venting going on. It's not just the mechanical code. We've got the fuel gas as well. All right, remember, fuel uh, mechanical code has got venting as well, but uh, so does the fuel gas. So watch for that. Okay, now this is a book of rules related to fuel gas. So the way you use this manual is you get that question about fuel gas. It looks like there it is a specific type of a rule question, minimum, maximum, size, something. It's a, uh, <clears throat> it could be, a, you might use the word shall or must. Okay, then it's going to be in this book. This book has a great index. Make sure that you can find it. Now this manual, this presentation on the fuel gas is a little bit different than what you might have seen in some other presentations. It did not take you page by page through the fuel gas book, but in order to do that, what I want you to do is answer all of the practice exams. The practice exams are in order as you come to them from the front to the back of the book, and that is a really good way to study this particular manual. So, um, just uh, keep that in mind as you proceed. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your business. This has been Jack Sheffield, Jack the Exam Guy, Jack the Exam Guy. And don't let anybody tell you you don't know Jack. Thank you for your business.